What's up everyone? It's Joey, Blush Response, and today we're checking out the Soma Laboratory Pulsar 23 Analog Modular Drum Machine. Let's get right into it. All right, so we got the Pulsar 23 here. This is a machine I've been dying to check out for a long time and I've had it uh, about a week now and I'm getting into it. But I'll be honest, the first day I got it, I almost wanted to return it because I did not gel with it and I really had trouble getting into the vibe. Now it's grown on me and I recognize that there's real depth there worth exploring. So let's talk about it. So you got four voices, kick, you got a bass slash percussion voice, you got snare drum, snare clap whatever and you got a hi-hat voice all these are rattable through effects which are like a delay and a reverb with pitch shifting and whatever else uh, and you can record with it it has a internal looper uh, and clock divider so i'm gonna set that up right now uh, and make a one bar loop and you do that by connecting the different clock divisions to the loop reset and i'm gonna just give myself a metronome of a quarter note hi-hat And you'll see you have your tempo light flashing and it flashes a bit brighter uh, when it's the start of the loop. Now, if you've just played something, you're not happy with it, uh, or the timing is a bit off, you can quantize it. You do that by holding these three buttons and you press the add button and you quantize. Now you start playing again. And you have these three position switches. Um, when it's in the middle, uh, it ignores the recording. On the right it plays, and on the left side it records. So using the add and delete keys, you can add and delete uh, triggers and audio. Um, so here's the thing. It's like, okay, that's all fine and good. I've got this loop of, of a beat that I'm into. It really falls apart if you're trying to sync it with other gear and it's slaved because it does not respond well to either MIDI clock or CV clock and it's it's infuriating. <laughs> Um, like, so it has MIDI in, but it doesn't respond to MIDI start and stop. So your loop often will be shifted in phase or something. It'll be receiving clock, of course, but it will be out of time, uh, just out of phase. And you have to manually hit this reset button to, to reset the loop in time. And it, it will take a few tries. And I just, I think that's a little absurd. It should respond to MIDI start and stop. It has MIDI. That's just basics in my book. And the same with CV. You will have to press that reset button a few times. Now, I see a solution for this uh, in using the, the Pulsar as the master clock. And I haven't tried that yet. I think that might alleviate, alleviate some of the problems because you can use the clock division outs for reset uh, and clocking, of course. Uh, the other big integration problem I would say is, okay, so you're not into the looper because of this problem I just described. You want to sequence it externally, say from a Eurorack sequencer. Uh, it needs 10 volt to open the, the gate fully. And 10 volt is really high, so you need to amplify whatever trigger source you have to be super high. Uh, in my case, I use the Erica Synth drum sequencer and I use the bubble sound booster stage to boost the triggers to 10V. One thing to also note is they will set, your, your drum hits will sound a little different triggering externally than they do uh, from playing from the looper, which is also strange, but if you just, you know, uh, <laughs> always do it externally sequenced, then maybe you won't miss the other sound. Uh, and I would also add to that that the clock division needed to sync the clock is super high uh, For whatever reason if you are going to try and externally sync it You need to multiply a standard euro clock by like four or something. So have a clock divider handy multiplier All right, so we made this super basic loop I'm just gonna turn that all off 
unplug this and I'm gonna sequence externally because that's how I like to use it so far. I haven't gotten deep into the the looper functionality yet where I can say that I'm a fan of it. Right now I'm not, but I am a fan of the Pulsar in general, so it bears mentioning. And yeah, I'm just using the Erica Synth drum sequencer. And then for the bass channel, I'm using the Industrial Music Electronics Stilson Hammer. So I'm plugging in all the triggers now. By the way, I fucking hate alligator clips. <laughs> and I know, I know this review is sounding like it's a really horrible machine, but no, I think it's cool. Uh, we're gonna get to the cool part, hopefully. If we don't, then that's a symptom of, of my performance with the machine. All right, I'm making a sequence. We'll just do standard techno. All right, now we'll get some gates going. Okay, we're getting somewhere. So I think the, what makes this machine really cool is that it's a semi-modular drum machine and I believe it might be the first semi-modular drum machine. Yeah, I like the sound of it. So you got that reverb. You have a master distortion on the end and you also have a delay. I think the delay is very similar to the Lyra 8 effects. Uh, the distortion as well. So if you have a Lyra 8 or the Eurorack module, the sound to me is almost identical. It might be something different, but the sound is the same. Now, First complaint of many, the the gain staging between the different uh, channels is a little strange. So you can very quickly overpower your kick drum if you bring in too much other stuff. So you have to be mindful of that. I'll say overall this kick drum doesn't, it's not like the punchiest techno kick drum ever for me. It needs, it needs a bit more. We'll just take a listen to the kick drum. We'll make it decay. It's got this overdrive. So it's not uh, the punchiest kick ever, but it's it's cool. If for more kind of industrial purposes, it would work well, but if you want a driving techno kick, this is not the one. It's got this overdrive. You can pitch it, of course, send it to the effects. That's about it. Um, and modif you have these what the fuck and oh my god inputs, which I'm not totally sure what they do, but the cool thing about the Pulsar is you can do body patching by just touching the different alligator clip points. So just by experimenting, you can get really, really strange stuff. Now let's bring the bass back in. And this is kind of like a, like a complex oscillator type sound. You've got a little bit of wave folding, shaping. I, I really like the sound of this. It's got a nice acidic low pass filter. Good for acid style bass. got the snare and yeah you got to be careful with the main out because it's uh you know you have to get your mix just right Speed it up a bit. I 
And yeah, crunch, crunchitize with that distortion. So you gotta be, you gotta, you gotta watch that, that distortion level. I think it sounds cool that way, but it's not gonna retain the punch very much. Um, you got these little touch plates here for doing weird shit, like a. Like I can modify the. I'll show you with the pitch, but basically it's a, like the more of your finger is on it. I'll show you with the filter. Oh yeah, see I love the sound of that bass sound. And as you can see, Here's without touching it, and I'm touching it. And yeah, so it's it's cool to have these little controllers. Of course, you got the LFOs. And yeah, you got an LFO that can go into audio rates. You got delay also, we'll try the delay, which with, it has a bandpass filter, it has this double mode and then it has pitch shifting as well. I love the pitch shifting. Insane pitch shifter. Pretty trippy, pretty trippy. And yeah, we can assign that LFO to, to random shit, like modulating the... Uh like modulating the hat frequency. And so... Bring it down to low. Now we're modulating the hat. Really cool. It would be nice, surprisingly this machine is, is only, uh, well, it's not surprising. It is an only send me modular machine and it's surprisingly less modular than I imagined. Like you have a full comprehensive set of modules here. So you have attenuators, you have AC con CV converters, you have the Sheos, which is like a sample and hold mixed with, um, with chaos. You know, you have these touch controls, you have individual outputs for the quarter inch tracks, you have your rec interface, it can do MIDI learn of parameters. You have a lot of like VCAs and inverters and stuff here as well. But for example, uh, you can't modulate the envelope shapes on any of the voices. Um, or like this hat warp control. We'll solo the hat. So this hat has a warp control. You can't CV it. And I, I feel like there's a lot of cool things that could be done with that if you could CV that so that's that's a bit distressing uh, but you know it is the first drum machine someone's made and it's a valiant effort in that regard uh, about everything else and I, I gotta say I love the sound of that filter like ooh ooh yeah Yeah, and see, I'm digging that, I'm digging that. Um, you know, the the thing with this is, like, it's it's just so primitive that it kind of forces you to rethink the way you work. Um, but again, like, I wish I could modulate the snare decay. 
and we'll maybe send this touch plate out to modulate feedback amount. Then I can do swells. Yeah. I gotta say, I love the filter sound of that hat. And you know, we'll send the, the delay to modulate uh, the snare band pass. And yeah, the snare can also be the kind of this low bit clap. And again, I would love CV over these two controls. Why is there no CV over the clap and mix control? It seems like a big oversight. Also, to, to modulate snare decay. Like uh, if I was doing... Something like that. So a bit strange that those are over overlooked, but you know, there's so much in here. I meant to turn the volumes there, but I turned all the attack knobs up or whatever. Let's get the snare on the two and four. Get the head. And you see the, the bubble sound booster stage is making this work perfectly from the Erica uh, drum sequencer. But see, the, the bass is killing the kick a bit. So you can mitigate this by, by using the individual outs. Oh my god, I can't talk today. Let's let's start patching some shit. Gets gets fucking gritty as hell though. I gotta say. Start modulating more stuff. Vibin on that. Switch to Dilemma. Stop modulating it.
We're gonna use some attenuators. We got four attenuators. So we're gonna use that for the hat modulation. Yeah. Bring that distortion up. So the other cool thing is the bass has this percussion mode. We'll bring that up. If I disconnect the pit. Gets hype. I just wish that kick was a little bit more punchy. But you know, you can use other kicks for that. Lost the snit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I didn't expect that. Oh yeah. Holy fuck. No distortion. Yeah. Back to base mode. No. Let's pack some chaos. Wow. Totally unexpected place for me right now. And I guess that's the real beauty of this machine, the happy accidents. We'll patch into the what the fuck. And the oh my god. Oh, my God. 
Let's try things out. Yeah, why not? We'll just start really attacking shit. Wow, that kick is totally deconstructed. <laughs> oh man. What a trip. Take the kick out. Wow. That's just the base channel on perk mode getting completely fucked. At the lowest tuning. Wow. <laughs> Noise terror. Now we're in a different zone. And yeah, the distortion output is hot. The volume dynamics are super crazy. I'm gonna be compressing it, of course, but wow. I like that percussion channel. That's so trippy. Fucking Christ.
Pulsar 23. Wow. <laughs> so that was unexpected. I'll be completely honest. In the first half of the demo, I was really having trouble with the Pulsar. And this has been my impression so far. It's not something you can just get into right away and fully understand and master. It's really an instrument that rewards exploration. And just today, I came up with a jam that was completely insane. <laughs> and, and spur of the moment, it happened right there. And uh, that made it all worth it to me. Uh, I had a lot of qualms about it. And I think truly as a drum machine, it, it's not, uh, it's a very specialized tool. This could not be someone's main drum machine unless you make purely experimental music. But if you want to make, you know, techno or something else, I, I, I would find it hard to have this be your only drum machine. And it's, it has not dethroned the rhythm for me. With that said, as a modular drum synthesizer system, it is completely out of control and impressive and incredible and i'm blown away by the capabilities for making crazy sounds for for touch performance the patching the touch patching everything puts it on a different level so it's an esoteric box that will lead you to unexpected places if you're into experimental sound and even if you're trying to configure a, a euro rack system if you look at it as a set of modules with everything it has like vcas inverters the voices attenuators whatever it's quite a bargain for the price point Granted, it's an expensive piece, but deservedly so. I really wish it had MIDI start and stop, and uh, like, like, come on, guys, please update it for that somehow, because it's a nightmare to integrate otherwise. Uh, and sequencing it externally is fine as long as you can get 10V, as I mentioned. I wish there were a few more CV jacks I talked about in the review, but CV over envelope shape, as well as some of the other knobs on the snare and the hi-hat would have been cool to have control over just because I hear potential when I turn those, you know, back and forth. But with that said, this is an incredible machine and I fully understand the hype. And yeah, it's dope. As always, samples of this jam are gonna be on my Patreon samples of every other jam I do are on there. You can find out what's going on with me, with my records, you can ask me questions, you can know who's coming up on the podcast. There's a lot going on in there. Subscribe to me if you feel like supporting it would be awesome. And don't forget to smash like and subscribe here. Peace out.